Welcome back to the Red Path. Today, I sit down with Mike Pestilens of Warp Hammer, and we discuss Corn Demons. Hello, welcome back to The Red Path. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Mr. Mike Pestilens of Warp Hammer. Mike, how are you doing, mate? Hey, Jamie. Thanks so much for having me on. Love your channel. Welcome. Um, having a good day. I'm ready to talk some corn with you. Hell yeah. So, um, just fair warning, Mike. One of the most requested things uh, I've had on this channel is do something about corn demons. Tell, t how do we work corn demons in with world eaters? How, you know, how do the rules work? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I've, I've messed around with uh, demons a little bit, but I'm no more than like a patrol or a little bit of summoning. I, I'm not, I just don't have the knowledge to, to really answer the question fairly to, to what people deserve, right? And, you know, we, we, we've been chatting a bit, um, did a bat rep on a, t a tabletop simulator for us about a month ago. And um, who better can I ask than one of the 2020 ITC top Chaos Demons players blog writer, demon expert, I don't think demonologist would be the right word, because that would be the, but, but Mike P, Mike Pestilence. Okay, so, um, thank you, Jamie, very kind. We, uh, we expect top tier stuff from you, mate, just a, <laughs> a little bit <laughs> I'll do it again. for you. Hey, okay, so, um, got, uh, I've got quite a few questions for you, um, I believe, unfortunately, it's seven questions, so not quite the perfect number, but I'm, I'm sure I can find a follow-up. Actually, I have a question for you at the end, so we'll get it to eight. Okay, all right. That, Corey, well, will, Corey will be pleased. Okay, all right. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so first question I've got for you, Mike. Um, first is, you know, it's the generic interview question for 40K, right? T tell us tell us all a little bit how you got into 40K, um, your first army, um, how long you've been playing, just the basics. But first of all, why Mike Pestilence? I know it's not your real name. I don't want you to have to reveal your real name, but why Pestilence? Why? Come on. Yeah. Yes, no. so, yeah, it all ties together, actually. Okay. So I've been playing since about 2017. Um, okay. And I got started, I was playing, I was kind of getting into PC games. Some friends played on Steam. They told me to check out this game, Total War Warhammer. Right. And actually, I'd never even heard of Warhammer at the time. I wasn't really in anything like that. Okay. Um, okay. But I played it, and it was super fun. And I was horrible. I'm just I'm horrible at video games in general. <laughs> I don't even play anymore. Um, but I really like the Skaven. Yeah. And then I found out there is this board game of sorts that goes with the, with the video game. I was like, sounds fun. Okay. So yeah, I got one of them. Skaven start collecting boxes for the the clan pestilence. Okay. Yeah, and then when I was going to my first event. Um, I didn't want to use my real name because at the time, like, I didn't have any connections in kind of this hobby scene. I knew all my coworkers finding out I was into all of this, like, all this nerdy stuff on the side. So I was like, I'll just put in some generic class name of, like, my favorite faction. Um, and then I had a lot of fun. I started beating all these great people. But then I was like, if I go to the next event, they're not going to recognize me if I use a different name. So I have to stick with my name. And it just became a kind of running joke with my friends. Um, Perfect. So yeah. Reasonable. But I will say from day one, Skaven are considered chaos in uh, in Warhammer and Age of Sigmar. So I was chaos from day one. Okay. I'll make that very clear. Okay. No, uh, well, that, that that's a, that's a really cool origin story. Actually. So you've only been playing since 2017. Yeah. Wow. When did you first dive into 40k? Um, probably about a year later. Okay. As I had a buddy, um, we were mainly just drinking buddies actually. <laughs> And then he, he heard of Kill Team. He thought it was cool. I was like, well, I don't play 40K, but I got a box of Lake Marines, um, drove to local GW, picked it up. And uh, I, I don't think, I wish I still had them, but the, the paint jobs are horrible. <laughs> uh, we just played some Kill Team on his kitchen table for a while. Right. Just started getting the full game. And um, here we are now, chatting. That, that's awesome. That's um, like, I, I, I played, dabbled, I guess, when I was younger, and I've always had Warhammer 40K the old fantasy battles and i've always been a total war fan as well so i've always kind of had it in my environment but i got back into the game proper right there at the end of seventh beginning of eighth so probably similar time frame oh yeah similar yeah yeah about 2018 so maybe about the time you was getting into 4k yeah. but yeah I, i'm curious 
Did you ever play on Kill Team at all? Yes, kind of. I played um, a, a chap I know from from, from around here. Um, before Kill Team, or as Kill Team was coming out, you know, this edition of, of Kill Team, he was like, oh, you got to try this out. He used to play this, um, oh, Path to Glory, I believe it is. It was like a 7th yeah. edition, like yeah. Chaos-specific Kill Team skirmish game. And we played a couple, and it was super fun. I really enjoyed it. We had like a homebrew set of rules converted That's to awesome. 8th edition. And I really enjoyed it, but then... You know, we kind of lost touch a little bit, and I, I haven't played proper kill team like with the modern rules though. But okay. I've heard great no, things fair. about it. So, but yeah. Um. Okay. So, obviously, um, you, you run a website, you run a blog, Warp Hammer, which is, and I, I, I've, I've read possibly not everything, but I've read a lot of it. Anything related to corn and uh, like the world eaters and the corn demons. Um, Thank you. And you're a uh, Oh, I think it was. Did you do the Death Guard preview on there, or not preview the uh, like the a review on there? Uh, no, I didn't do a, re a review. I wrote a little bit about souping Death Guard with Narble Demons. Yeah, okay, I um, believe that was it. And then obviously, um, a little while ago, I believe at the beginning of February, you actually did a uh, article with Goonhammer. Yeah, it was actually fortunate. Um, uh, randomly got in touch on Discord with one of the um the authors, Robert Jones from Goonhammer. Um. I think he's he's the, the trilogy and is how they know him. Yeah. Um, really cool guy, and actually a, a very talented artist. He does yeah. a lot of their graphic work, really top notch stuff. Um, we kind of collaborate. He's a big cast guy. I was a big demons guy, um, and we were able to collaborate on that. And I think we put together probably the best resource out there. I think yeah. for demons players in ninth edition. Um, yeah, it's um, yeah. like Go Goonhammer is such a great site. Um, for, yeah, it, nothing but love for the, the general... those guys. Else. general 40k everything you could possibly want about 40k they're a great resource and then your warp hammer very chaos and, and specifically chaos demons um or why why did you start that why what caused you to think one day you know what sod it i'm, I'm gonna write a blog about demons or about chaos what why why did you do yeah. that um yeah great question it was one of those things where um 40k is it's it's low-key kind of huge like there's just yeah. hundreds of thousands of players and I don't know, maybe even millions of, of fans in general um but i found that there weren't really a lot of great resources or really any resources at all for demons players right. um and i kind of felt like what i wanted to create was the website that i wished had existed when i got into 40k i was like well let me do that for the next like demons player get into it that's like because it can be very overwhelming at first yeah and a uh, part of that is a lot of people go to places like Facebook groups or um, down to various sites and they ask for advice. And they get horrible advice, genuinely yes. horrible advice. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. It's it's worthy. Yeah, it's like a mix of like a lot of factually incorrect things, but also just like a lot of people are going to legitimately spend like tons of money um, on stuff they're never going to use because they got some incorrect advice. Yeah. Um, so I was like, let me just create like the best resource I can. And I feel like I wanted it was very important to me that it was all stuff I had play tested myself against right. very good opponents. Yeah. And was doing well with. So um yeah, I kind of figured like I can contribute to the community. Um and honestly when I started the site, um I thought it would literally get like maybe like 10, 15 views an article. Um it recently hit a hundred thousand uh views wow. uh, like a minutes ago. So I was like, I guess people like the same nerdy, nerdy stuff I do. So yeah. that's a pleasant surprise. Yeah, that's really cool, and you know, that's that's astonishing because you would think, or I would think, I guess, in my kind of lazy, just making assumptions about the world, the way media has changed over the last ten years, right? Um, more social media, video content with you know, like all, all the YouTube and, and Twitch yeah. and. Um, uh, TikTok and all these things, all the, the way we consume our media has, has changed in our lifetime, and certainly the last 10 years. And, you know, I've dabbled in blogs, not about 40k, but o o over my over my life. And it, I, I guess I just felt that a blog is, I don't want to say in the past, because obviously it's not, and I still read blogs myself, but, you know, I'm an older guy. So I, I, I would have thought, 
But that's 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 really cool. I, that surprises me, but in the best possible way. And I'm really happy that you're hitting that kind of success because you definitely deserve it. But it's also honestly surprising. Like, 100,000 yeah. views is pretty damn good, man. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. I think we're at 140,000 um, when I checked last. But it's one of those things where um, demons, I feel, have a bit of an advantage because oh. like every other chaos faction is interested in them. Um, I think there's, it's kind of, as you said, there's, there's rooms for different kind of content. Like there can be like kind of more like niche channels that dive like very deep into one specific sub faction. Like you've done with world leaders, the best world leaders content out there. Nothing but love for your channel. Thank you, man. Thank um, you. And then there's also room for kind of more long form written stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel 40k as a player base, there's a lot of like younger players that might prefer videos, but there's also a lot of like people in like their thirties, forties and up yeah. um, that might prefer, prefer that. <laughs> for written content, yeah, yeah. which is kind of just, you know, I, I like writing um, and I have no video skills. So I'm very thankful we have you here to set up this uh, this interview. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just doing, again, every article is just things I enjoy writing. If no one reads it, I'm still happy to have done it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just, I'm happy that people are enjoying it and it's resonating. And yeah, I'm just looking that's, forward to doing more. That's um, just uh, what, where you touched on there. It, uh, about like how the the niche works right and i think you uh one of the things that one of the reasons i started my channel this channel is because there was similar to you there was no dedicated world eaters resource yeah. right there's there was a facebook group i was in there was the reddit group but little bits here and there and i thought let's just let's make one thing and bring everyone together but you sir are a genius because chaos demons Number one, yes, you're 100%. Chaos, Space Marines, Knights, if we get Renegades and Heretics, they're always <sighs> going to consider, right? Oh, I hope so. Dark Mechanic. They're always going to look at Chaos Demons as an yeah. ally because they're so versatile and useful and summonable and all these things. Yeah. Number two, you've got four factions within a faction. Four, you know, aligned factions or you kind of internally suit them however you might play them. But and I think what is possibly the the big brain move here from you, you've got two at least two game systems. You've got your forty k and you've got your AOS. Yeah. Because for an AOS player who's thinking, man, uh, you know, forty k looks fun, but I don't want to spend another eight hundred dollars on an army. But I do have this Nurgle Demon yeah. list. Let me go and check out Warhammer. And how does this? So yeah, you're a. Uh, kudos for that because you, you're just whether it's your kill team your aos you know any anywhere that demons touches you've got the finger on the pulse there and uh, i respect yeah. that i respect the hustle <laughs> thanks man but yeah it, it's just it's nice that people like demons i think demons there's no offense to world leaders no offense to anyone else there's a lot of very cool factions yeah but i think demons are just ignore like their tabletop performance i think they're the coolest faction out there like our, our best unit is a talking chicken like <laughs> what? Like what are we even doing here? Like, yeah, like these like these like these meltas and these necrons with like these big sci-fi guns and the tower of like this advanced firepower. We're like, we put a talking chicken, so that's cool. And we just do our thing. Love. Or like you have like, these little adorable dancing nerglings. Um or like like salamanders have flamers and our flamers are literally walking balls of flame. Like you can't yeah. beat that for flamers. Okay. Uh, point taken. I, I will with your talking chicken. Is that the um Keeper of Secrets, is that what it's called? Or is it... Uh, the Lord of Change. Lord the of Change, Change, sorry, yeah. yes. Yeah. Keeper of Secrets yeah, no is Slanesh, right. Yeah. So the, there's an audio book, The Trials of Azrael. I don't know if you've listened to it. Um, mm, not yet. Okay, I, I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but Khan is in it. Azrael <sighs> of the Dark Angels is obviously the protagonist. And there's a uh, there's a Lord of Change, a giant talking chicken, and is almost described as a giant talking chicken. <laughs> And um, to survive, Asriel pits the talking chicken and Khan against each other. Mm. And I'll, I'll let you read it to find out. I'll let you read that one or listen to that one. You need <laughs> to check it awesome out. Story. But yeah, it, it's a really cool audio book. Okay, so um, ne next question I want to ask you. Um, you, you Competitively, you play strongly, very strongly uh, as a Demons player. Um but you've also, you know, kind of been tinkering a little bit, messing around with some world eaters. Um, 
And of all the Chaos Legions, why them? Like, obviously, as a Chaos fan, as someone who's who's open to all Chaos, all the Dark Gods speak to you as a Demons player. That's true. Why, why Corn? And I also know you've been playing with some Necrons, and you you know you're a bit bit a bit of a Renaissance player there. But um, why why World Eaters at the moment? Because they're not known for their competitive placing. They, they, they're not known for... They don't have, like, the Iron Warriors, Obliterator, or, or even Emperor's Children, mm. kind of the uh, their Terminator builds. Why World Eaters? Why, why are you interested in them? Sure. Um, and this just kind of goes back to my thoughts on tabletop wargaming in general. I feel if there's two shooting armies playing against each other, a large part of it ultimately comes down to, and there's still skill involved, but a large part comes down to, like, who has better stats and who has better, like, more efficiency for their points. Yeah. Um, I've never liked shooting armies because I feel like, like just they kind of show up and kind of do the same thing. Some do, some do better, some do it worse. Yeah. Um, but I kind of feel like the fight phase in general is where like, skill can really shine through. A lot of like little fight phase tricks and stuff. Yeah. And even if it's a lower tier combat army, you'll always have a chance to outplay someone. Yeah. Um, in the way that if you have a bad shooting army, you just, just kind of don't do your thing. A combat army. Yeah. Um. And I also thought that World Eaters were really underrated. Yeah. Um, no, they're not top tier. Um, they're not white scars or anything in terms of like melee power armor. Um, but goddamn, you know this as well as anyone. Berserkers, they hit like nothing else in the game when they get in there. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, um, and, and they can really catch people by surprise. So again, if I were, again, the, the whole GT schedule has been thrown off by. Uh, COVID for very understandable yeah. reasons. Uh, I probably wouldn't take them to like a, a big tournament if it were happening tomorrow. Yeah, um, but I think they can definitely do fine at like kind of a local, smaller level. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, again, it's just I love melee armies, and if you're talking melee and chaos, I mean, come on, world leaders, that's the place to go. Yep, I, yeah, I, I hear you, and and I completely agree. Um, there, there's been a few players. I, I know Mark Perry. Um, I believe Ben <laughs> Sansom. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. Um, have, 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 have done pretty good at GT level um, with, with World Eaters. Now, you know, uh, probably souping in a little bit of word bearers and stuff, but, you know, that, that, that's fine. But I completely agree with your statement there about catching people unawares because it's just been at no point except the very beginning of 8th, um, I believe Nick Nanavati ran a World Eaters patrol in one of his cultist spam lists where, you know, he'd, he'd have massive blobs of cultists that just took over the board, yeah. tagged everything, and then he'd have, a, I think, a demon prince and a squad of berserkers, power them up, they'd take care of something, and other than that, there's been no real presence. No one cares about them. They've never shone. They haven't got anything particularly special. And if, I've taken them to three RTTs, because with COVID in the middle, kind of scuppered my plans. Sure. And every time everyone's like oh world eaters okay you know they've got their dark angels or their raven guard or their eldari or, or whatever I'll, I'll play a game with you it's cool and i you know i'm i'm a little over 50 50 games but no one sees it coming yeah they, oh berserkers they're, they're fine in my league, but you know i've got i've got 10 intercessors there you ain't gonna touch them oh first round of combat just take them off the table please i'm now gonna tag your you know whatever, yeah. your dreadnought here or something and you know takes me yeah it's yeah. um it's I I enjoy that I enjoy. I don't want to say being the underdog, but surprising people. Yeah. It's kind of a bit of a Spot meta on. game, like a psychological game. If you if you put Raven Guard or you know like six months ago put Raven Guard with Assault Centurions in front of me, I know exactly how this game's going. I know what your opening gambit is. Yeah. But if if I put an army down that you don't know. Like, if, if you and I were to play a game now, honestly, because I haven't played against demons, I would be lost, other than the information I basically know from reading your articles, but that's not the same as experience. And that's these kind of under-the-radar armies, world eaters, and some of the other sub-factions, it gives you that little little bit of an edge, I think, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. No, I want to make one thing clear. I love what you're saying about being underrated and catching people off guard. I don't really do gotcha stuff. Like if we're playing oh, yeah, World Eater, yeah. someone says, "Hey, what's the army job?" Like we have a nine-inch pre-game move. I'm um, gonna double fight. I can yes. fight it for three times with the unit. Um, but again, it's just as you say, it's not experience. Yeah. And until someone's like, "Oh, they're like I'll get in combat. I'll have like two berserkers 
charge another unit. I'm like, do you want to interrupt? And they're like, oh, there's two berserkers. <laughs> just be interrupt, and the two berserkers like kill their five intercessors. They're like, well, okay, I should definitely should have interrupted against these two berserkers. And it's just, as you say, stuff like that. Yeah, I, and yeah, I I completely agree with the um the, the gotcha thing. Something I've done, oh, not in my first RTT, but in the others. Um, I I, I have a sheet, and it it's basically pre-game. I can move this many units nine inches. I can fight these many times. And it's like five bullet points of things that might be seen as gotchas, right? Things that not everyone expects. And I just hand that to my opponent and say, look, these are the things, if I'm going to be tricky, be aware that I can do these things because yeah. half the time they thanks and they just never read it. You know what? <laughs> I, I, I've given you what I can. I'm here to win a game. So let's, That's true. let's go. But um, okay. So next thing I want to ask you, um, obviously – from, from what you've said, you, you're a competitive player, much, much like myself, a lot more experienced and uh, accomplished. But um, regarding like the hobby, the law, the, these kind of other aspects of of the thing as a whole, for you, are they just things that are in the background, or you know, do you love painting, or do you love reading, or listening to you know the, the audio books, or anything like that? Um, how do they stack up for you? Sure. I'm actually super glad you asked because I think there is a misconception amongst a lot of people um, that just operate with hearsay that a lot of competitive players like don't care about that side of the hobby at all. I, I don't, that could be further from the truth. I mean, it's one of those things where I think if it weren't for the the lore and the hobby side, as you say, um, I wouldn't have kept interest in the competitive mm -hmm. side. Um, <laughs> And it's kind of like people would be like, oh, well, how can you like it, the lore, and then run these non-lore friendly lists? It's kind of like for me, like, for example, when I was younger, I was super into medieval history, yeah. and I could still play chess and, like, move my rook or something. <laughs> um, it was kind of like, even though they didn't exact directly tie together, what happened in the lore happens on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. um, it's just knowing, like, hey, I've got, you know, these these demons that are super cool I've read about. Um, now I'll see what I can do with the best with them. Or these world eaters. I've read Betrayer, and I'm like, oh, well, I have to want to see these guys on the tabletop. Um, it's definitely the lore that drives a large part of like what factions I'm interested in right. and what units right. I want to try to make work. And then from there, it's the competitive side kicking in of like, okay, let me look in the codex for synergies, or let me like practice against this very good player I know, try to figure out like what this list needs. Um, yeah, for, so for me, they go hand in hand. Um, so basically, like, I guess I'm pushed towards a faction by the lore and pushed towards certain units by the lore and background. And then just while it's on the tabletop from there, it's like, okay, let's try to figure out how to get the most value out of these things which I enjoy. Yeah, that no, that absolutely makes sense. And I 100% agree with you, um, especially this misconception that competitive, people that play competitively, because I also play fluffy games and stuff. And, yeah. But people that play competitively are, are not interested. Like, yeah, it's every player I know who is a competitive player, whether online or in real life, yeah. loves whatever their faction is, can tell you everything. Yeah. They can tell you what colour underwear a particular <laughs> ultramarine sergeant was wearing on the second day of the Battle of Town. Yeah. You know, we if, if yeah. we're into this, if we're prepared to spend five, six, eight, a thousand dollars on an army and hobby supplies and going to events, yeah, we're into this pretty deep, right? We're, we're committed and we're going to take everything. Yeah, I think that's definitely, and I and I I don't like that the the attitude from m many parts of the community against. Com I, I honestly think competitive players are some of the best advocates and ambassadors for the game overall. For the most part, I've had less problems playing competitively than I ever have in pickup games and things like that. So yeah, I think that's fair. It's definitely people draw some unfair assumptions, and, and to any competitive players that are. Looking down the narrative parts, I would discourage that too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll make it very clear. It goes both ways. And I yeah. think that um as long as the most important thing is not like the style of game, but as long as like you and your opponent have agreed on the type of game you're gonna play. Yes. That's the important thing. Yeah. Yeah, that act of, you know, mutually agreed. Yeah. We're both here to have fun and this is the type of fun I want. Does that gel with the fun you want? Let's do it. Let's, you know You're spot on, Jamie. Yeah. That's... Yes. I mean, hell, that's how everything in life should be. You know, consent between everyone, no problems, right? 
Yeah. Okay, so leading on from this, um, what is one of your favourite bits of cornate, corn-related lore? You know, some, wherever you sure. want to pluck it from. Let me sure. Go. So even though I actually got this ready for the... Okay. Dinner, I got it. Um, it's a special edition, uh, Blades right. of Corn and Sigmar. Right. Okay. And I don't even play Sigmar. It's just a guy locally was selling it. I was like, I want to read the fun parts of the battle tome. Okay. Um, and so my knowledge of corn demon lore is mainly from actually Sigmar. Okay. But it's super cool. They have these um, these skull crushers, which are these the, the juggernaut mounts the the demon horses. Yeah. Um, will find a mortal champion, and if he does particularly well in battle, they come up after the battle, and then the uh, the champion has eight heartbeats for when the horse arrives to accept it and get on and like go ride back and start serving corn. And if not, then the horse will just, the juggernaut will just kill him instantly. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. It's like, you're like, Hey, you got a promotion, but if you don't accept the promotion, you're dead instantly. So <laughs> welcome to corn, buddy. That is, I've never heard of that. That is, that's fucking amazing. Um, yeah, it is. That's. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, the, the 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 fantasy of the Sigma Hearts really really go crazy with the demon lore sometimes. Yeah, that's oh wow, that's really cool. Like I, yeah. it makes complete sense. I mean, you, I I love how they tie in like the sacred numbers and stuff. But just put you've got eight heartbeats or you, eight heartbeats or you or you're dead. Yeah, and I'm someone that probably takes twenty to thirty heartbeats to decide <laughs> what I want for breakfast. So uh, there's no way there's, I would just be instantly just slain by corn. I, I, you know what? If, if like a eight foot tall brass monstrosity of fangs and blood and guts strolled up to me after I'd just had a heavy day's bloodletting, I, I don't know. I don't know if I could answer or if I could jump on in eight seconds. It, yeah, that's a tough choice. So yeah, that's that, true. that um, you know that that, that all credit to those uh, to the juggernaut riders to the 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 yeah that's <laughs> that's yeah. a good one. I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, what what's your favorite piece of corn lore? Um, okay, so back in the day, when I I don't know early teenager I guess, um, corn was a little bit different. Um, obviously forty k was a li little bit different. It was more kind of satirical sure. and a bit more comic. Um, but corn used to be, and I believe I, you you you'd be have to correct me if I'm wrong, maybe. Um, I believe AOS corn is maybe a bit more focused on like the honor and the things like that. But I remember there was a White Dwarf article, and one of my favorite back rips I think was in the same White Dwarf, but I, I can't figure out what number it was. Um, but there was a, like an article on a bloodthirster, you know, the, okay. the early, like the, the, the little bloodthirster. Um, and it just, and it was just going on about that, right? About like the, the honor of corn um and how the i believe like the demon would be promoted or you know enhanced by corn and you know given yeah. a new shell to inhabit or however it works and um you know this is like i said when i'm a teenager and i i just really it really like spoke to me it's not anything i guess specific but it's you know if we're, we're talking corn here um and i just thought that was really cool because it it, it really focused on the the flip side of, of the coin, right? Every um, every chaos god had their, you know, their their negative and their positive, I guess you'd say, and and that's kind mm -hmm. of been developed but changed with the modern law, you know, like Nurgle's still jolly but is also you know like entropy and decay. But yeah, the corn was you know you have this bloodthirsty mania, but then you also had like the honor of combat and the, you know, we, mm. yeah, you treat your opponent fairly. And I, I don't know. It was just something I really always enjoyed that. And whilst I didn't play Corn or World Eaters until I got back into the game a few years ago, mm -hmm. it, it kind of they was always my favorite of the Chaos deities, I guess. So that makes sense. But yeah, it was um, always, yeah, always had a bit of a gravity to it. That's fair. Yeah. Like like Karin telling Erebus to to get up so we can hit him again. He wasn't yes. gonna hit him on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. There's. I, I I'm. I'm I, well, I wanted to just dive into it, but no, I'm not. I'm gonna yeah, <laughs> respect we'll our that time. And, yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's a whole hour's di discussion in itself. Um, so, one of the most popular questions, frequently asked questions I get, is regarding corn demons. 
um, how to ally with as a World Eaters player with World Eaters on the tabletop, how to mm -hmm. effectively ally with Corn Demons as a patrol or as something you summon. Or I, there are there is a little bit of potential, though I don't think it's too important of you know running blood letters uh, blood letters in your World Eaters list as troops. But how do you think? As a World Eaters player, if your primary army is World Eaters, how would you use Corn Demons as in in your list if you had to or if you wanted to? What would you do? Okay, sure, and that's that's a great question, and I thought about this a lot before coming on here. Okay, um, and I would say first of all, there's think about like anyone wanting that question. I would think about why they want that um, in terms of pure tabletop performance, and this this hurts my heart a little bit. Um, but corn demons don't really synergize well with world eaters, specifically. I think what world eaters mostly on the tabletop is um, some sort of psychic support. That's really the main thing that needs them. Like like word bearers pair amazingly. Yes. Um, yes. Which is also fluffy because of Armatura. Yeah. But uh, I think that corn demons. So first of all, think about like what you specifically need, because if you're bringing in corn demons, it's probably mainly more for for fluff reasons, which is awesome. Don't get me wrong. We can figure out how to optimize yeah. that. Um, so yeah, think about basically what would the corn demons do for you and what do they have that world eaters don't? Right. Um, I would say the main thing would probably be, and this would probably hope people are hoping to hear, um, about a bloodthirster, some sort of big centerpiece model, mm -hmm. um, to draw people's attention away. Now this doesn't work as well against better opponents that kind of know what everything does, but I think if you're playing like people like in RTT that maybe not like game one, for example, don't as like not as competitive. Um, a bloodthirster can really throw off their target priority and they can lose sight of the, the berserkers and the rhinos pushing up. Um, so I guess probably conceptually what I would run is patrol, um, maybe two bloodthirsters and a bloodletter bomb, probably um, 20, 20 bloodletters. Uh, just so you're not paying because demons they cost two CP to deep strike for over 20. Yeah. So probably, uh, a 20 strong blood letter bomb. Um, a key concept though is that armies are limited in CP and corn demons and world leaders don't have any CP regen. Um, other than that, I think the strat when you kill a character, yeah, you yeah. Your skull. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, but no reliable CP regen and corn demons and world leaders both need CP desperately. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say if you're allying in corn demons to your world leaders, you can't have a third attachment. Like you can't run word bearers, world leaders, and corn demons, as awesome as that sounds. Yeah. Um, you just grind up, you can't spend that much on detachments because the bloodthirsters, which I think are underrated, I think there's a place in the competitive list for a bloodthirster. Um, you have to spend that one CP to exalt it. There's like yeah. zero, what are you even doing? If you're not exalting your um, bloodthirster, and then often um, if you're running, whether you're running one or two, you're going to spend initial CP um, to buy a relic because mm -hmm. um, there's some relics that synergize really well with bloodthirsters. Um, probably the the four up invuln uh, armor of scorn. It yeah. also gives psychic yeah. deny. Um, so again, you're probably spending two on the patrol. You're spending two for your bloodletter bomb because you're spending one to upgrade the banner and then one to deep strike it. And then probably a fifth CP for your bloodthirster. Um, so at that point, you're probably looking at you're starting with seven CP, and that's before buying World Eaters relics, um, and then pregame strats like the pregame move. So I would just say be very conscious about your CP and make sure you're like very lean. Like in the World Eaters, if you want to run Corn Demons with your World Eaters, you just you cannot afford to spend a CP for a second World Eaters relic. Yeah. I know a lot of people love to buy additional relics, um, and that's great. I think a lot of the relics are pretty strong. Um, for core and cast space marines, but you just, you cannot afford to be buying multiple relics at that point. Um, and then you have to be very conscientious during the game about your CP expenditure. Mm -hmm. um, one of my pet theories of 40k that I always tell people um, is that people CP reroll too much stuff. Yes. If you're running corn demons and world leaders, you, you can't like if you have like a grand blast cannon on havoc and you roll one for your d6 damage turn one. Don't reroll that. Yeah. You're going to burn the yeah. CP way too quickly. Um, or turn one if your Rhino like fails on a five up invulns um, from the prayer. You just you can't reroll that. You just won't be able to afford that in a Corn Demons and World Eaters roster. Um, 
I would also say that the the other main benefit that corn demons bring to world leaders is for some reason world leaders don't have reliable deep strike charges. Mm -hmm. The best they can get is an eight root rolling, which is I think a two thirds chance, which is not bad. Two thirds chance is bad, but it's not reliable. I want yeah. something up yeah. like 80, 90 or higher. Um, and blood letters fit perfectly into that um, because they, with their banner of blood, they have a 3d6 plus one charge rerolling if they're corn demons attachment nearby. Yeah. It's like 98% or something. Yeah, it's very, high. very strong. Yeah. yeah. So I would say just big picture, what I would probably do if I were running corn demons with world leaders is a world leaders um, battalion or something with your warlord. And then a corn demons patrol with one bloodthirster um, and one unit of 20 blood letters. And the other tech piece um, people want to think about is yeah, unless you're running the Dark Apostle for Dark Disciples, you probably don't have great, cheap little action monkeys, people call them, like infantry, mm -hmm. not characters, but actions. Um, I think Furies um, okay. from deep fit in perfectly into that slot. I often find myself bringing two units of five because they're 45 points each and they move 12 inches. They have fly. So basically turn one if there's like a midfield objective, yeah. they're getting there with that banner. Um, or they can begin up to screen or you can throw them away to score and engage on all fronts. Just advance, you start them on the line, you advance, they're basically guaranteed to end up in the next table quarter. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would say just big picture, if I, I've been talking for a while, if I had to condense it down, the three main things corn demons bring for world leaders are reliable deep strike charges, yep. sort of centerpiece kind of distraction piece, um, and uh, furious for actions. So those would be kind of, just, I'd work those in. Um, the total list thing about it brings to about 500 ish points, which still leaves you 1500 points to play with and just bring as yeah. many preserved yeah. as you want. Okay, that's um, that's a really interesting. I'd, I'd never considered the Furies, I, I, I remember reading them in oh, uh, so the good. codex, but yeah, that's that's a really solid point. Um, yeah, I'm and, actually um, gonna sorry, go ahead. Ahead. I was gonna come with a hot take right now, okay. Uh, Furies are not only a good recommendation as a World Leaders ally, they are probably the best Demons unit, I think, in 9th edition. Ooh. So that's that's my hot take. If you want to you want to clip that and make that a highlight somewhere, that's my hot take. Okay. Mike Pestle is a Warhammer. Furies are the best Demons unit in 9th edition. <laughs> that, you know what? Intuitive. I can see it. So you said 45 points, 5 models, 12-inch movement with fly, infantry? Infantry, yeah, which yeah. is the main thing. So they can okay, do any sort so of actions. Yes. About that, um, yeah, okay. Because if you advance, you can't. Can you raise banners if you advance? No. No, yeah, I was going to no. say, but but still, you know, the way a lot of the objectives work, yeah, you can definitely just do a move. Yeah. Okay, I like. That. And 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 often I find world leaders they want to take objectives like um engage in all fronts, for example. Yes. But yeah. often maybe there's a situation you don't really want to use a big unit like an expensive unit like ten raptors to go score engage in all fronts. I'm going to turn you need to play a little bit more cage. You can just advance some furies out, just go get an equity table quarter, um, and just farm you those two or three VP. Okay. They're fast attack. Fast attack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting because, um, whilst I've never really even given them a second look, I will now for sure. But, um, there's two units I want to ask you about corn demon sure. specific units that I've, you know, I've seen used, talked about, thought about. The first is the, the Flesh Hounds. Is oh, Flesh one? Hounds. Awesome The, the Psychic Denying Dogs, yeah. right? Um, what, first of all, what are your thoughts on them? Maybe not necessarily as allying into World Eaters, but just as, a, as an overall unit efficiency. What? How, how do you rate them? Sure. Um, flesh Hounds, I'm going to say two contradictory things on these. Okay. Um, because I like to speak in riddles, I guess. <laughs> flesh Hounds, they're a great, great unit. What they bring is a lot of great things um but they're they're really hard to play right now yeah their points cost okay so the issue with flesh hounds is and this is something i again this is going to upset some people but you have to think about it if you think competitively mm -hmm. if you compare 18 points for a flesh hound to um, a similar amount of points for an intercessor gets and it's just it's a little bit painful um a flesh hound is it's t4 five up in bone two wounds so similar profile does have the info, but doesn't have the armor save, which is sometimes better, sometimes worse. 
Um, but not being infantry, not being OPSEC. Um, and that the current thing is just at their cost, like things like heavy boulders, just pick them up. Like it's, it's yeah. downright yeah. silly um, how easily flesh hounds get picked up by a lot of weapons in the game. Um, they really should be like, I don't want to give an exact number, like 14, 15 points for what they do. Okay. Because again, yeah. they're mainly only unit. But when they get in, they have three attacks, strength five, minus one AP, one damage. It's not bad. It's not it's bad. It's a berserker chainsword. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But when I can get a berserker cheaper than a flesh hound, yeah. it's just, mm, it, it's tough to justify spending points on flesh hounds in that okay. bank next list. Um, the only thing I like about them is the psychic nine is it's cool. Yeah. Um, that has value. Um, but when I'm running world ears, I'm generally allying in a, a word bearer sorcerer. And then you have the four up to nine. There's like two two key powers in the opposing list you can yeah. at least do something yeah. about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think just with so many heavy bolters and things like that in the game, flesh hounds are in a little bit of a bad spot. Okay. But they're they're like one point tweak. If they go like two or three points down, um, I think they're they definitely merit competitive consideration. Okay. That's I I I appreciate that analysis. That perfect makes perfect sense. So the second unit I want to quiz you on. Um maybe a little bit different but the skull cannon oh my favorite okay i'm so happy you brought this up jamie okay. let's talk skull cannons, my right, friend. let me because I, i've looked at it i've looked at the stats and the points and i'm thinking and because my philosophy competitively with world eaters over the last year bring guns and it's completely contrary to world eaters but the way i look at it every single infantry model in a world eaters list is going to be good in combat it's going to be better than yeah. your your what you've brought on if it's the same you know another marine and of course i run berserkers and i have a, a rhino push or, or whatever if i was using achilles for a little while and things like that but i always i advocated from day one khan to support shooting in a world eaters list always push that and it was one again one of those things everyone oh so you brought world eaters okay so you're going to throw everything across the board go ahead and believe that because whatever i'm playing is going to shoot you first and you're going to deploy wrong and i'm going to take advantage of you making an assumption so with corn obviously and demons especially are so melee focused everything is combat whatever god yeah. But the skull cannon seems efficient. It seems seems like a really solid choice to me. To, what are your thoughts? Break it down for me. Okay, um, I I think Jamie, I think you were one of the first people to kind of be on the world leader shoot very well train. I have to give you credit for that. Thank it's you. a really smart way to play them. Um, I remember watching one of your videos about the triple predator with Karin video. <laughs> really cool stuff. Um, the skull cannon, I like it a lot. Not for the reasons you said, actually. Okay. Um, the shooting, it's okay. Yeah. Um, the main reason I love the skull cannon is it comes on this huge base, um, and it has the stratagem. And the demons got in, they got it in their psychic awakening book a while ago. Okay. Um, and for one CP, when it's targeted um, for the rest of the phase, it takes half damage from any incoming attacks. Okay. And what I really like that is like the perfect objective holder for ninety points. It'll chip some damage down range. Not a lot. It'll kill maybe like three or four intercessors in a game, whatever. Um, but it'll chip some damage down range. And if something ever focuses on it, you can just pop that and suddenly it becomes weirdly durable. Yeah. It has it's T7, people are on this. It's T7. It's it's a beefy, it's a beefy boy. Um, three up save, five up invuln, um, and half damage. I remember there was a one of the first tournaments I played ninth edition was local local RTT. It was like 20 some people. So it wasn't like a GT or anything, but it was a pretty legit event. Yeah. Um, and I went three three out with the event and won the event. Well, second because of painting scores. But long story short, is did very well. Um, and the reason was game two. It was a super close game against the Space Wolves army, and it came down to his last turn. He had to blow my skull cannon off a of backfield objective, and he had a a double storm cannon Leviathan, which is just a, a mess to deal with. It was yes. S two at the time. Um. But the, the half damage, I popped it on that. I had, I had one CP left, popped it, and survived the full Leviathan shooting at it um, uh, with, like, two wounds left. Yeah. And I ended up yeah. winning the game by, like, three points because I had, like, five more points of primary in the last turn. <laughs> I like the, the Skull Cannon. It's, like, a nice little utility piece. 
Yeah. Don't bring it yeah. expecting it to just blow stuff away. Just wow. bring it to screen your backfield with a big base, hold an objective, um, and any damage is a bonus, basically. If you, if you view it like that, I think you can get a lot of value out of it. Yeah. I think, um, is it 10 wounds or does it, is it more in degrades? I can't remember. I think it's, I think it's, I want to say eight wounds, maybe even seven, but it doesn't degrade. Okay. It, it's like high single digits. I know that. Okay. So it's kind of close to that sort of a uh, dreadnought, uh, uh, build eight, eight on exactly. eight, nine like wounds, two, seven, with a five up invuln, the demon invuln at 90 points. I'm, I'm I think I'm going to go on eBay after this and have a little look around. I think I, I like it. And actually, um, if you get the the corn demon, start collecting. I've never, I don't like to buy individual models that come and start collecting sets because you can always buy start collecting set, get a ton of savings, buy a lot yeah, of use. True. It was one of those units I only bought it because I had corn start collecting because I needed like 10 more blood letters. I was like, oh, I'll treat myself. I'll get the full start collecting. Yeah. Uh, and ended up using the skull cannon and really enjoyed it. Um, I don't run it these days just because kind of like big picture, I think demons are slipping a little bit in power. Yeah. And we need to kind of optimize a little bit more to keep up. Um, and it just got taken out of my list, but it's not bad. I think you certainly can have a list that does very well um, yeah. with skull cannon. Just don't, I wouldn't like overdress. I wouldn't bring like three and be like, oh, all this artillery. Right. So you're just going to have some turns they just all whip and it'll feel really bad. Yeah. Like one or two is a little tech piece to screen the backfield, hold objectives. Yeah. More hammer stamp yeah. approval. Good deal. I like that. Um, okay. So let me move on to, uh, oh, we're on question seven. So looking forward, because obviously. Um... Jamie, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you here, but go there's ahead. one you also want to talk about. Um Sure, go for it. The coolest units out there. The one we haven't touched on really. Um, the Blood Crushers. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the Blood Letters riding the Juggernauts. Yes. I think they're in an interesting place. Okay. In terms of like coolness factor, like Blood Letters riding a Demon Horse is like yes. as good as it gets. Um, they got, got a points drop in the last uh, FAQ or whatever, like down to 35 points. On tables that don't have a lot of terrain, because the issue is their cavalry, which means they can't go through terrain, which means it's they're easily screened out. Yeah. On tables that don't have a lot of terrain, I think those are at least worth looking at. Um, okay. Those cost two CP to deep strike any unit larger than three, I think, which kind of sucks. So again, not ever in an optimal build would I run them. But I think if someone has some blood crushers lying around, um, they can receive the banner of blood upgrade. Um, so okay. two CP yeah. pops in the deep strike, three CP total is banner of blood. Run like six or seven. They have a stretch to do more of wounds on the charge, possibly charge something else. Not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also one really great relic if you want to get really like creative with your combos. Okay, go for it. Um, the Crimson Crown. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. And for those that don't know, what the Crimson Crown does is on a six to wound, um, modifiable, a six a six up to wound, um, a corn demon unit within six inches makes an additional attack with that weapon. Um which is just amazing with things that can benefit from veterans of the long war to make that up to a five from a six. Mm -hmm. um, so things like if someone has obliterators running around, I think it's really good if you have unit three obliterators, bring in a corn demon's attachment by the crimson crown, and then those obliterators just pop bets on them, and they basically get exploding fives to wound. So it's like an additional like thirty three percent more attacks on average yeah. or whatever. Like that. Um, a really not a bad play. Um, or things like possessed, for example, some people like possessed, I like possessed out of rhinos, world leaders, pop vets, possessed, which are already getting plus two attacks on the charge, meaning world leaders. Yeah. And now every attack on a five up, they're getting additional attack um, with veterans. They can blend things. Yeah. So they just want a relic. If you're using any sort of corn, corn demons inside of world leaders, super benefits. Yeah. Um, because yeah. the veterans of the long war from the Crimson Crown. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I've, Crimson Crown's been one of those kind of because that was in the the core eighth edition codex, right? That was yeah. a yeah, mm -hmm. that one's been kind of up and down all the way through eighth edition and yeah. and, and ninth, obviously as a as one of the stronger relics for um, as one of the stronger relics for corn demons. And I think um because I've got uh, I think I've got twenty blood letters and a blood master or skull taker or what one mm -hmm. of the infantry HQs. Yeah, and um. I remember writing a list, trying to work them in, and that was something I looked at. But, um, but yeah, okay, yeah, appreciate the insight there on you know breaking down some of those units for us, because especially for players who like myself are maybe interested, but not um, 
certainly not experts and you know familiar with what demons do or corn demons do but you know not completely up to it on the um on the rules let me all right yeah. i know i started the next question here but now yeah, I'm trying to question watch, seven I, well i wanted to roll back oh, a bit true. Go so, ahead. so something i've thought and one of the reasons that i've constantly talked to myself out of mm. allying in demons right corn demons for me like i said world eaters take care of combat there's there's no issue in combat if, if you know how to fully utilize yeah. the fight the charge phase and the fight phase with your movement your tagging you you know how to focus your stratagem buffs you should be able to take care of 90 percent of threats on that you're ever going to face with a squad of five berserkers quite frankly mm -hmm. and for me corn demons come in and they do a little bit different you know they have um you know uh the the hell blades do i think extra ap or extra damage on a wound of a six right for the blood letters yeah extra damage on so, a six yeah but ultimately it's just it's the same thing it's it's also sure. combat maybe a little bit faster with their available buffs and a little bit more um uh, focused against particular unit types but ultimately if i've got uh, five berserkers or ten blood letters your marines are dead if I make sure. the charge, your Marines are That's dead. fair. Yeah. So for me, it was, I don't need blood letters because I've got Berserkers. And I don't really need um, a, a Blood yeah. Thirster because I can, if I want, I could run a Kaitan as my distraction fix, right? Or w whatever the comparison is going to be. Yeah. So, but summoning. Now, I know when you summon, you don't gain any of the, you, you don't get particular stratagems relics uh the if the legion trait equivalent and things like that would would you consider if, if you were going to a tournament and you was like you know what i'm going pure world eat or i'm taking a world eaters list i don't want no stinking sorcerers in there i'm just repping repping the uh, world yeah. eaters here and you had say 500 points 400 points and you just wasn't sure how to fill it would you consider summoning demons for 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 an rtt you, you're not going to you know a gt you're going yeah. A little bit friendlier, but you still want to win your games. Would you consider summoning corn demons? Um, <clears throat> sadly, like from a competitive perspective, the value brings to the table. Um, not at all. Okay. Because and just to be, just to be frank with you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. I think it's super cool. Again, like a narrative game, absolutely, it's really cool to summon a bloodthirster. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, the issue is when you summon, you can't use any pre-game strats because right. that point's too late. You don't get access to stratagems at all. So, for example, you summon in blood letters. Well, the great thing about blood letters is they have a once per game 3d6 plus one charge. Yeah. And then they can't get that 3d6 charge. So you can't like summon them and then get a super reliable charge after summoning. Um, the bloodthirsters, I think, to get any sort of value out of them, they need to be the exalted. Yeah. Um, the exalted upgrades. And you can't do that once they're summoned. Um, the only thing I might do is I would summon like a, a skull cannon behind me onto back objective. Right. But even then, I'd rather just at that point probably leave a rhino that had disembarked some berserkers. Um, I can't think of any unit. I mean, maybe, again, I said this before, maybe some furies, just summon them. If you don't have things like Dark Disciples on the list yeah. um, and you're destroying a bunch of stuff, um, you can summon a unit of furies to do an action or something. Yeah. But even then, even then, I just... Because you have to have a character staying still, and world leaders' characters are going to be moving up. They're often in a rhino or moving up with the rest of the party. You won't get left behind. Um, because you're not just paying for the summoning. At that point, you're paying like 70 points or whatever to leave your greater possessed behind right. um, to summon the Furies. At that point, you're paying 105 for some Furies. And it's just like, it becomes it super cool. It just doesn't really work mechanically. I when I have done summoning before, and actually, Ben, I was talking earlier, I went through. Um, was a summoning heavy list. I like 300 points of summoning. But what I did basically was I used summoning to break the rule of three on Beasts of Nurgle. Okay. So Beasts of Nurgle, for those that don't know or are unfamiliar with world leaders from your channel, um, are this insanely durable Nurgle demon unit. Yeah. And because they're not troops, you can only run three. Um, start with three squads, and then during the game, I would summon like little individual units of one to like fill space to surround deep strikers or just put another body on objectives I was worried about. Yeah, that's something like that. Like, if you're running something that has to be with the intention, like, there's, like, some mechanic you try to take advantage of. Um, Corn Demons and World Eaters, I just 
Mm. I'm not seeing what a green is really. Uh, that's. I I, I I pretty much agree. There was um. There was a tournament a few months ago. Um, someone ran World Eaters with summoned, de- uh, uh, corn demons, and I believe awesome. the play was, um, the Dark Apostle ran um, illusory supplication, the five up in Vuln, mm-hmm. but they pre-game moved the Apostle nine inches more or less straight forward, advanced the Rhinos in the movement phase to be within the bubble, mm-hmm. and did not move the Apostle but summoned with the Apostle. Blood letters, so the blood letters summoned onto an objective because of the nine plus twelve inch summon radius sure. and whatever it is. And I just yeah. thought, I mean, it, you know, it, I don't know if it is critical to winning in games. I just thought it was a really cool yeah. way of, of using cool. that uh, apoplectic frenzy to get the summon and a bit of board control. You know, I think that that's super cool, super awesome. Um, another thing is blood letters. One thing I love about them is they're not just damage out of deep strike, is they're reliable obsec out of deep strike to scrape steal objectives. Yeah. Um, yeah. if they're coming out of summoning, they don't have obsec, yeah. which kind of defeats a lot of what makes blood letters great. Because just in terms of raw damage output, just bring more preservers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the uh, the next question I got for you, Mike. Um sure. looking looking forward to ninth. Obviously, we've had a few codexes drop now. Um we're still yet to get our really any rumors or, or anything on chaos space marines we kind of we don't even have rumors but i think with the bellicor drop personally i think we're going to see a chaos demons codex start to rumor you know leak maybe in the next few months i'm hopeful for anyway um but what is it what what do you think do you think there'll be some good synergy here because something based on like the um the Death Guard Codex, right? And this is still confusing for me because I just haven't taken the time to really sit down and research it. Sure. So it's kind of like a couple of questions in here. But first, um, if you could give, if you could explain to me like I'm a kid, right? Like I'm brand new to the game. Summoning, what based on the Death Guard Codex? Because to me, it looks like you can't summon anymore, right? But I could very easily be misinterpreting things. And um, following on from that, we'll go ahead and uh, score me on summoning right now based on Death Guard and, and let me know how that's going. Sure. So good news for any Nurgle fans out there. Death Guard can 100% still summon demons okay. because the ability to summon, it's not something on the data sheet of the thing doing the summoning. It's something on the data sheet of things that are summonable. So cast demons all have their real demonic ritual on their data sheet. Okay. Well, almost all. Uh, I think the the Nurgle tree doesn't have the role. Right. Um, but on the whole, cast demons all have the role. Um, so Death Guard, by the rules interpretation, 100% can still summon. Okay. Um, the only controversy, and I can kind of see both sides of this, right. is that the Death Guard get a special mana faction bonus. If they're all Death Guard, they get additional minus one toughness aura. Yeah. Um, and there's some debate over whether or not summoning uh, breaks that and frankly, it's a little bit silly that GW didn't FAQ this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to get too far in the weeds on a specific word, but long story short is the possibility may be there that summoning still exists as an option for world leaders or any sort of cast space Marines, but there's some sort of mono faction bonus that they may or may not lose. That's probably most likely okay. avenue we're going going forward. Okay, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. And now when you put it in, that, in those terms of it being an ability on the demon itself, that it can be summoned rather than on the summoner summoning. Yeah. That makes sense. And hopefully we'll get some clarification from Games Workshop. Sure. Uh, I'm sure it's happening. Or, or it'll be further clarified if and when we get a uh, Chaos Demons Codex. Um, sure, yeah. So, all right, to lead on from that, um, what would you like to see for as a Chaos Demons player, as a Chaos fan, Chaos player, Specifically, as a kind of as that synergy between all the chaos sub factions: your mm-hmm. Marines, Death Guard, Demons, Knights, Renegades, and Heretics, Dark Mechanicum, because that was very much that was present in Eighth, right? Chaos Soup yeah. was a thing, obviously competitively, but Chaos Soup is a thing in the lore. Oh, for it's, sure. Yeah, it's you don't very rare do you get just a war band of World Eaters or just a Nurgle. Um, like plague tide of, of demons 
there's yeah. there's the mortal kind of like rebellion and the cult crop up then you know like maybe marines drop in to assault and then the dark demons come in because the warp gets thin oh so fluffy so, yeah it's yeah. it's perfect and i do understand why for game mechanics wise gw's going towards especially for competitive play pushing mono faction no problem you know yeah. competitive we're always going to try and bring the best list we can but between the codexes in a year's time we've got every chaos codex we could want let's hope what would you like to see link in those things yeah that's a great question and a super important one um i'd like to see buffs work along marks so let me give you an example of what i mean yeah um the corn demons have a train piece actually not many people know about i'm um, called the skull altar yes because there is this really cool looking train piece and its main thing is it gives plus one attack to corn demons yep. nearby yep. i would love to just remove the demon synergy there just remove the demon specification slowly it makes sense that a blood letter or a blood master whatever they're called yeah um yeah. on this corn train piece gives plus one attack to berserkers now mm. um or gives plus one attack to karn because like corn's giving him special focus or something yeah um, so a lot of the demon specific buffs <clears throat> could be changed to just general god marks. Oh, that'd be so cool. God. What is it? The knight desecrator, the 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 combat focus yeah. chaos knight. Standing around that. Yeah. Okay. I'm down with that. Yeah. Exactly. Or give give somebody to give knights marks because currently I think they can take a relic called like the corn, like like corns chosen or something yeah um but there's no way to actually give them a mark or any sort of synergy like that yeah i know it could be broken it would be tough to balance i can see why gw doesn't do it but i'd love for some way for like cast space marines to have a way to buff blood letters like they get mm -hmm. plus one attack from being near a, a berserker or some sort of any sort yeah. of synergy there. yeah and just cost it appropriately maybe like limit it to like make it a strategy that costs cp or something but just yeah. some way to have yeah. any sort of little like pairing that makes yeah. them both better yeah. being near each other would love that yeah i think the uh, the mark of chaos is something that was thoroughly underutilized through eighth edition it was something there that mm -hmm. opened yeah. up unlocked access to a couple of stratagems like fury mm -hmm. of corn or grandfather's blessings yeah for the marines and that was really it with some very niche so it was funny you brought up the skull altar there when that dropped when the rules for that dropped i looked at it and in my head, I'm like, so I can summon a terrain piece, which cannot be destroyed. It, it becomes mm -hmm. on the on the battlefield. It's terrain. Yeah. It's not a fortification. It's it's a line of sight blocking hunk of invincibility. So I'm thinking, okay, what else does it do? So what if I combine this with the blood master or whoever, and then warp talons and a greater possessed, and and I started stacking up just all the synergies I could. Yeah. And you could make some absolutely bloody lethal warp talons, but Ooh, it was very yeah. contingent on position and everything. But the skull, the skull is such a great, great model, um, and I, I too would like to see that um, internal mark synergy between world yeah. eaters, corn <laughs> demons, you know, uh, the blood pact, <laughs> uh, or, or, or whatever they bring us out for yeah. knights and things like that. Um, what about kind of more general hopes, maybe? Um, okay. For, 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 I mean, if you want to focus on Chaos Demons, that's absolutely fine. But or if you want to touch uh, Space Marine, Chaos Space Marines, however you want to look at it. But like, you know, we've seen Death Guard, um, mm -hmm. Dark Eldar, Jokari, sorry. Um, uh, most of the Marine factions now. What would you yep. like to see for the Chaos Factions? Outside, I, I think we'll get something for the Marks, but something special for us. What, what would More you like general? to see? I would love to see... A lot of Chaos Space Room players are, justifiably or not, they're upset that Chaos, that Space Marines get Doctrines, mm -hmm. like just extra AP on certain turns just for free. Yeah. Um, I don't want to wage that debate. But I would say I want to see some sort of mechanic like that which we can interact with and change throughout the game that gives some sort of buff. Okay. So the the dream for me would be something that they have in Sigmar where it's like if you kill, they keep a tally of units destroyed mainly during the game. And once it reaches eight or something, 
all of your corn units get plus one attack or reroll charges or something. There's something similar, it's like like corns, like there's blood is being flown all over the battlefield and skulls are being reaped and corns now like focusing down the battle and giving yeah. its blessing. Something like that, or like plus one AP to melee attacks, or something for Zinch, for example. Um, once you've casted nine psychic powers, um, you reroll ones to cast or something, or get like reroll ones to your inborn saves or something. Just something that represents like the god is like giving the battle its blessing and giving its yeah. attention. Yeah. Um, yeah. For for people that watch your channel and play both Sigmar and 40k. The Sigma Rose team has done such a great job making the armies feel flavorful, like really like representing their god on the battlefield. Um, so some sort of like tally system yeah. um, to give buffs as the battle goes on would be super super cool. Yeah, I I, I agree. I think um, certainly a lot of players um, who either play Sigma or have come from Sigma, and also a lot of yeah. players who played World Eaters during Seventh. Um, uh, uh, you know, just focusing on world eaters for mm -hmm. a moment. Um, uh, the the blood blood tithe, I believe it was called in seventh edition for for chaos space rings. Basically, you know, for you you earn these points, you or tallies for the amount of models slain, and you just yes, it's fluffy. It's mm -hmm. an extra mechanic. It's an extra rule set. It's an extra tool that we can use. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I don't want doctrines in the same way that Marines get doctrines. That if we <laughs> yeah, just got doctrines, it would feel wow, that's cut and paste. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're just getting kind of like the leftovers. Um, <clears throat> I really like what they did with Death Guard with the Contagion range. I mm -hmm. thought that was the perfect way to join the yeah. narrative and the competitive, and and make the best best outcome possible in, in in my opinion 100 agree okay um so that's i mean i think we've covered a, a lot there we've you know we've looked to the future we've gone over your thoughts on the um like the best way to integrate corn demons with your world eaters which is what which is what yeah. people wanted to hear and I, I really appreciate you giving your thoughts on that um is there anything else you want to add uh to, you know mention or anything I mean, the main thing would just be sharing the excitement over the, the amazing new Bellacor model yes. that's coming down the line and what that could mean um, yeah. in terms of any sort of force multiplier or chaos in general. Yeah. Because, I mean, Bellacor is Mr. Undivided himself. Um, I'm curious. I said at the start, I had one question for you to make it eight questions total. Yeah, that's true. And what kind of impact do you think Bellacor is going to have on chaos overall competitively in his introduction? Competitively? Yeah. Like, I mean, do you think It'll be like a good distraction card effects for World Eaters players, or what kind of what are you looking? So to see I'm thinking, books? you know, without really knowing anything about the rules, um, really, I've, I think a little bit's been revealed, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. If I'm right, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking he's Bellacor's going to have a similar impact potentially. Now I, I I'll have to wait and see how he interacts with. Chaos Space Marines, right? Sure. How any synergies work. But in an sure. ideal world, maybe like a how Mortarian works for Death Guard. Like the, the big powerhouse. Because Bellacor has to be powerful. We know that. Uh, ha mm -hmm. Hopefully has to be. And yeah. the the amount of stuff that um, the rules that he has that kind of reduce damage or, or increases resilience and survivability. Mm -hmm look really damn fun um if i'm remembering the right rule set here again depending on how it interacts with with say world eaters if i'm running a battalion of world eaters and i just want to bring in bellicor sure at the moment i would love that to be a um to be something and i think there's always that desire to use the bloodthirst of the chaos knight whatever as the distraction kind of effects for a world eaters player because we're so focused on nothing matters except except getting my berserkers into combat i don't care what happens to any other model on the table yeah. as long as my berserkers get there because they are our premium unit they are what our army is mm -hmm. often built around and and myself i always have that distraction unit go ahead and throw firepower at this two up four up land raider i've managed to swing or whatever right I want Bellacor to be 
a true beast that runs up, up alongside the, the berserkers and, and, and brings things down and is an asset to them. I don't know how necessarily synergies would work with Buffy because with him being unaligned, it's like the uh, how, how Abaddon functions where he gains all the marks. Does, I don't know. Have they revealed if he's unaligned or if he's all the marks? Not sure. Currently he's unaligned, which I think is a little bit sad. Yeah. Um... Because I know in the law he he was like cast away from um mm -hmm. from uh, from corn right wasn't he a demon of corn first and kind of tried to take over or something like that that's a great, that's a great question not sure okay I I want to say that something like that but I I could be way off base there but yeah um obviously he's the you know the prince of the unaligned yeah um, I don't know I don't want him to be a distraction kind of thing I would like him to be a, f a force multiplier something that the berserkers are charging around and alongside and if you're sitting across the table from me bringing this with your ultramarines or your dark angels or wh whatever you're bringing you're looking and every you know turn two turn yeah. three this horde is you've been blowing things up my rhinos are gone my my predators are blown up but bellicor is still there you've taken three wounds off him there's still 20 odd berserkers are you know scuttling around his feet yeah i want i want to look at my opponent and see fear in their eyes if i put them <laughs> on the table that's awesome yeah i i would love to some synergy besides just being distraction yeah um because i think in general distraction card hexes don't work as well these days yeah um don't get too off track here but i think because of the existence of armies like sisters of battle and with how cheap melta attack bikes are yeah a lot of distraction card effects is aren't durable enough to really be distractions anymore um so i'd love to see some sort of synergy so we can earn his points back um other than just draw and fire maybe like give rerolls um or heck let's get greedy like plus one attack to all chaos units nearby why not let's have some fun with it yeah you know there's there, there's a lot they could do um yeah and it would be it would make sense for bellicor to to genuinely every everyone gets a little something not yeah. you know not like you know ev you know if you're nurgle you get like an extra toughness or something which would be ridiculous but a single buff to everyone with the chaos keyword like yeah. said, plus one attack or you know uh, even something i, I don't want to do any uh, leadership modifiers because the way the game's played at the moment leadership is still too insignificant in my opinion but there's something that is that is good but not broken you know there's even if it's like an extra ap in combat or, or i i don't know there's opportunity yeah. there's definitely opportunities and i i hope we see something cool yeah or, you know whatever what um spot on is there any other chaos demon i because i'm not too familiar with the line because i know the, the greatest slanesh demons the shalaxi was recently re re remade um, mm -hmm. and obviously we've got bellicor is there any other greater demons or demons in particular you'd like to see remodeled like a, 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 re, a refresh of sure i think all the greater demons now that Slanesh's nash is updated look pretty good i think yeah. bloodthirsters and they're surprisingly old kit i think they're like over i want to say like late fantasy but the kit still holds up super well yeah great kit um i think honestly things that well, I would have said the Slanesh Fiends were the other main thing, but they got updated too. Yep. Um, I would say Furies are still hard to find. I actually keep Ash mine from some Tyranids and um, Age of Sigmar ghouls. Okay. Or Tyranid wings on the ghouls. Yeah. Um, I love just, they got a plastic model, but it's it's like in a Warcraft box that comes with other models you don't want. It's just, it's hard to actually get the models. Yeah. Some sort of unique release there. Um, and I think that actually Corrin specifically, um, plus some of the other gods, have really cool Forge World Demon Princes. Yeah. Um, yes. Try to blank on the name. Um, U but Corrin, Uraka or Asaka, the War Fiend? Something like Uraka the War Fiend or something. Yeah. Uh, who's actually surprisingly good for his points in 40k. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely worth an HQ look um, for any players who want just a cheap beat stick. Um, but those models are so cool. Mm -hmm. And the current Demon Prince kit just it has some cool bits. It has some great kitsch batch opportunities. 
it could be so much better. So I love to see some of the Demon Prince kit with more customization to look more like the a Forge World ones. Yeah. And just like like a bunch like just one Demon Prince sprue, like a second upgrade sprue with like a bunch of cool bits for each yeah. of the gods. The Demon Prince kit could just be way way cooler. I I refuse it deserves to, use to be the uh, the new new Demon Prince. I've got an old metal one. The like the one mm. where he's kind of like sideways. Um, no, I know the metal one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah super and cool. It's such a good model. Um, yeah. Because you know he's got the power armor, like the kind of expanded, yeah, like torn apart power armor. And the only thing I did, I swapped out one of the hands with a with a modern talon, so I could run dual talons. And I've got a sword magnetized yeah. for it, like to just go straight in his hand. And um, some one of the tyranid a hive tyrant, maybe I, I use wings to give him wings. Looks fine. And That's awesome. Yeah. So much better than than the current model. It's the current one is so frustrating. Now I've seen some great paint jobs and modifications to make the current yeah. Demon Prince look great, but you shouldn't really have to do that. You should be able to put it together out of the box and it just looks kick ass in my in, in yeah. my opinion, you know? Yeah. I know like for a lot of Zinch players, um or Thousand Suns players, there's a, a Sigmar I mean to call them Morgast, which is like like a little bony flying guy. Yeah. And honestly, like he's basically the official Zinch Demon Prince model at this point, because so many people use that one over the the plastic Demon Prince. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that's our our biggest wish list at the end would be just yeah. the Demon Prince kit. You're right about the um, like the Forge World Greater Demon, or like a like a Raka, and I think there was a Samus model, and there's quite a few like the 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 Forge World Bloodthirster as well. Is really oh, badass. The sli- yeah. The slightly and different colors. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. I, I agree with you there. Okay. Um. All right, Mike. I think I think we've covered all the bases. Um. You know, everything that I wanted to talk about that um, uh, subscribers had kind of asked me to touch base with you about and stuff. Um. I I I first of all want to thank you. You know, for for spending some time, for spending an hour and a half with me here chatting chatting 40k which is i'd spend all day talking about 40k quite frankly but you know but yeah thanks 100% for, with you there thanks for yeah. um hanging out and um we uh i will have obviously links in the description to warp hammer um and because it's, it's a great site everyone you need, you need absolutely should check it out um a lot of really good articles there have you got any are you working on anything right now for it because i know you, you've been on a little bit of a hiatus because I don't know if you want to talk about something you mentioned to me that you're working on with a friend. I don't know if that's... Yeah, I've got, got a few things in the works, actually. Okay. Um, one, there's a guy up here that we've talked about. Um, he has some video skills and some really good equipment. Um, very interested in 40K. Don't hold me to this. We're in the talks about making some sort of battle reports. It could be like, um, I play demons, I play necrons, I play custodes as my three main armies. Um, he plays dark angels. Um, he's got a few things in the work. Got some other chaos soupy stuff. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I also play world leaders too. But yeah, they, they need to be said. Yeah. But we could have some really cool potential for some battle reports there. Um, another thing we're doing is I'm a warp hammer. Currently, writing an article actually. I went three zero at a tournament this weekend with necrons. Yeah. Uh, it's been my kind of quarantine hobby project. Thanks, man. Um, honestly, I was just happy just to be out of playing 40k again in person. It's been a hot minute. Um, so just any wins were like kind of secondary to the enjoyment of being there. But um, doing a little tournament right up on that one. Um, I've also got an article I'm very excited about. I've started this one five times, honestly, at least. And I just I keep quitting because I'm like, there's it's too big and it makes some more progress. I'm like, maybe I can finish it eventually. It's um, on playing Chaos Soup 9th edition. Okay. And all the various synergies, like ideas, like combos you can kind of build around, or um, some in general list structures I like, or some like list suggestions that are kind of soupy, um, a mix of some fluffy stuff, some repetitive stuff. Um, I've had, I've, I think I first started writing it like two months ago, and I've just, I've never made enough progress to finish it. That's my goal. <laughs> I'm excited. This week I'm getting the Necrons article done. Hopefully next week I get the Chaos Super article done. Yeah. Um, so the Chaos Super article, hopefully it's finished soon. We'll see. I'm yeah. um, along with a few other article ideas in the pipeline and lastly actually um through the site we started doing um with our patreon with people that want to support the website which i super appreciated yeah um, i'm very thankful for um i offered for our high tier just as a way to try to think of get back to these nice people and we started doing some coaching um okay. so we got a few people okay. working with just kind of helping them get more demons um 
I say just a lot of a lot of 40k stuff. If some people are interested in, feel free to reach out to me. Yeah. But a lot of 40k stuff in the works. Um, I know a lot of people have like thoughts on the cast ninth edition, like what they're lacking, what they're in need. I just honestly, I think they're very strong overall. I think they're super fun to play. I I love every game. I'm just I'm really an eternal optimist about chaos. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always happy to be making more content of that. So. Fingers crossed people enjoy the Cat Soup article and other stuff in the line. Well, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one because, I like we talked about earlier, I think Chaos Soup should be should be possible and should be something we're not penalised for, quite frankly, like with the you know the extra detentions. Yeah. I think, um, excuse me, yeah. <clears throat> I think it's, it's a natural way to, to play Chaos. Um, yeah. But yeah, but that, that all sounds really exciting. Um, definitely... Uh, Keep us up to date in the Discord about your uh, your bat rep thing there, and um, feel free to you know always drop in whenever you post an article. You can um, if you message me when you drop it, I'll I'll do an everyone tag in Discord and stuff like that. Um, but uh, but yeah, okay, Mike. Nothing but love, Jamie. Thank you, appreciate. It. And uh, everyone, like I said, go check out Warp Hammer. Um, all right, Mike. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate your time, mate. Jamie, thanks so much for having me on. Love the Red Path, and uh, keep doing your world here stuff, man. Hopefully we talk again when there's a new codex yeah, sometime yeah. soon. Hopefully. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, all right, folks, as ever, stay healthy, stay safe, and kill Mainbow.